blessings in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Al Mesa, and today I want to speak with you on four godly principles and how to stand for the Lord. Today, if you have your Bible with you, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, a very familiar portion of Scripture. Uh, chapter 6 is verse 10 through 14, and uh, read along with me. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes or tricks. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that the evil, when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Amen. Paul there mentions the word stand at least four different times from verses 10 to 14. And usually when somebody in the Bible uh, repeats himself over and over again, it's not accidental, but it's intentional. And usually it's to try to drive home a point. And here Paul is trying to drive home the point of the importance of standing uh, your ground and standing for the Lord. Uh, and you know, Paul talks about spiritual forces, but uh, honestly, as Christians, we don't stand just against demonic forces, although that is true. Uh, there are other things that we stand, sometimes it's not always the devil, sometimes the devil is us. It's our flesh. It's the very things that we struggle in our flesh, the Bible talks about that. So it's standing against our own flesh at times, it's at uh, times we stand against persecution, uh, against temptation, against the world, uh, uh, times of suffering, uh, times of testing, uh, sometimes we go through a period of discouragement, uh, disillusionment, uh, different emotional things that we go through. Someone once told me, you know, the 100% of the battle is usually in our mind. Usually the, the attacks happen in our mind and then trigger emotions. And so uh, we stand against many different things. So, so I want to share with you today uh, four different things that uh, we can do uh, to stand uh, in our hour, in our time of faith here. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, number one, uh, one of the first principles I want to share with you today is the, uh, the ability to learn to live in union with Christ. Learning to live in union with Christ. You know, one of the things that we do as Christians is we become disciples. And a disciple is a person who's a learner. He's learning. When I first became a Christian, um, I wanted to know everything about Jesus that I possibly could. Because how many know you can't follow something or someone that you know nothing about? So I, ha I wanted to learn who is this guy Jesus and what did he teach and what am I supposed to do as a Christian? What, do you ex what does he expect of me? So, uh, and, and so we need to, uh, in order to be in union with Christ, to learn about Christ. It's kind of like in marriage, the best way I can, analogy I can use is in marriage. There's a lot of similarities. In marriage, one of the things that you, we need to understand uh, is uh, this thing called commitment. Um, I often tell people, if you're not ready to commit to a marriage, you're not ready for marriage. Um, the other thing, uh, in the same way that, you know, if we're not committed to Christ, now we need to make that commitment, understanding our commitment, then, then more, more or less than likely we're not going to be around for a long time. Um, I had friends that uh, started with me in the faith, and at some point they dropped off because they really weren't committed to following Jesus. So it starts with a commitment. And also the other thing, as I said earlier, is learning. I know when I, I got married with my wife, um, you know what, I, she was brought up in a different uh, house and uh, she was a female, I was male and, and, and so we had to learn each other's ways and uh, it was a little difficult at times adjusting but learning and so it is with the Lord. Um, the Bible tells us, you know, your ways are not my ways, neither are your thoughts my thoughts. So we need to learn uh, to live in union with Christ. Number two, uh, we need to keep our roots deep in Christ. Uh, a tree depends on its roots, and in the same way we are dependent on Jesus Christ. Uh, roots draw their lives from the soil, and in the same way we also uh, draw our life from Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And when Christ comes into our hearts and our lives, what he brings uh, with that is life. Uh, and we have a spiritual awakening, we have a new life, and he begins to live out uh, his life in our lives. So we become alive to Christ, alive to God. Uh, as before we were dead in our sins, now we are alive to God. Roots also give stability to a tree. 
Uh, you know, when I was an unbeliever, I wasn't sure uh, who to follow. I was a very confused young man. I didn't know which road was the right road. And so it caused a lot of confusion and instability. But as believers, uh, uh, we, we were, were rooted in Christ. And that root uh, helps us to keep stability in our lives so we're not emotionally all over the place, that we're not falling every wind of doctrine that comes into our church. We know for sure that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And the third principle also is this, building our life on Christ. Building our life on Christ. Every house needs a foundation. A foundation is so important. When the foundation is bad in a house, it affects a lot of different things. Doors don't close right. Uh, sliding glass mirrors don't close right. Walls begin to crack. In some cases, houses begin to sink. Uh, it becomes a real problem. So a foundation has to be strong in order to maintain that house. The Bible talks a lot about foundations. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11, Paul said this. He said, no other foundation other than Jesus can be laid. And Paul uh, was uh, uh, dealing a time where people were coming in with doctrines of, you know, keeping the law and circumcisions and kosher food and different things that really did not have to do anything with salvation. And he wanted to make sure that everyone understood it's Jesus Christ and that's the foundation and no other foundation can be laid other than that. Everything else becomes external. But we also see something that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7. Verses 24, speaking of foundations, he says this, Everyone who hears my words and doeth them, he's like a wise man who built his house on a rock or on a foundation. And he also talks about how the winds come and the rains come. And notice he says on there um, that the storms are going to come. He says when the storms come. He didn't say if the storms come. So for sure storms are going to come in your life, in my life as Christians. And so he begins to lay out a plan for success. Uh, not that it would keep us from the storms, but it would keep us through the storms. And so the key to success there is our ability to apply God's word in our storms. And storms can show up in different ways. Sometimes they're financial storms. Sometimes there are storms in our marriages and we're going through a difficult time. Uh, sometimes it can be a storm at work and our work now is maybe in danger, um, uh, health issues. There's a lot of different things that can happen. And right now, we're definitely, uh, we're going through a stormy time, storms all around us. And yet I see on the horizon other storms that, that are going to come our way. But the key to remember to, to overcome these storms, it's important that we remember that we need to apply God's words in our lives in order to overcome and get through these storms. And God's promise to us, if we'll obey his word, we will get through. And that is our third principle. Our fourth principle is this. Become stronger in our faith. No matter where you are in your faith, you and I can become strong, stronger in our faith than where we're at right now. We can continue to grow in our faith. As the Bible says, going from glory to glory. And uh, in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says this, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, prayer is so essential. And building strength in our lives. And here Paul talks about, uh, I'm sorry, Jude talks about building up ourselves in our faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet, with the evidence of speaking tongues, I would encourage you and reach out to you that you would cry out to God and ask God, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost, God. God, I want to be able to pray, uh, as the Bible says, the praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and maybe you haven't received uh, uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I know I was there at one time myself as a seeker, wanting more than anything. I remember getting saved and people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and feeling, well, God, where am I? How come I haven't been filled? Don't be discouraged. Just cry out to God and ask God to fill you so you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Paul uh, was one of these men that uh, prayed in the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. He prayed in tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 4, Paul says this, He who prays in an unknown tongue edifies themselves. That word edify means to build up or have a, 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 like a building, to have a building. So we talk about a foundation. And now we're talking about putting a building on that foundation. After the foundation comes the building. So Paul talks about that, building yourself up. As we pray, we edify ourselves and build ourselves up. One man said that a, uh, a person um, who doesn't pray is like a tree without roots. 
and it's essential that we do that. So those are the four principles today that I want to share with you. Number one, learn to live in union with Christ. Number two, keep your roots deep in Christ. Number three, build your life on Christ. And number four, become stronger in your faith. I want to reach out to you and pray with you this today as we, as we depart. If you, if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to pray that God fuels you. Uh, amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today, Lord. Thank you for this time in your word, oh God. Thank you that you're our foundation, God, that no matter what storms, how big, how dark, how long they last, God, if we'll just hang on to your word, God, and if we'll just apply it to our lives, God, we're going to come through the other side, God. And Father, we thank you for your precious promise. Help us to lay the right foundation, which is Christ, which is obedience to your word, God. And we thank you, God, because, Father, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. Fill my brothers and sisters out there that have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, God. Fill them, God. Even now, as they hear me, God, touch them, God, and fill them, Father, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen and amen. So glad to be with you today. God bless you. Have an awesome, beautiful day today. God bless.